seeing the Lord coming to us with a solution, we're starting to say, wait a minute, is this really you, God? And here he is coming with a solution. You know, he, he's made the challenge, now he's coming with a solution, and then all of a sudden, what do we do? What did he do? Verse 27, but straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And I tell you what, I like those moments. You know, I, I keep going in the day, and I keep searching for God sometimes. Sometimes I grasp a bit of it in the morning, sometimes a little bit moving on, sometimes in the noonday. Sometime a little bit in the afternoon, and you know what? It's still not where I need to be in you, God. There's still something missing, and I got to have you. I got to have that portion. I got to have that part of me that is settled. That there's a rest in me for whatever it is that you're doing, because I know when I'm at rest with God, and I know I feel okay. I feel okay with some things in it, and there's a rest and the peace that shalom of God is so settled in me. Then I know it is well. It is well. I don't want to walk around thinking it, it ain't well. It, it, it ain't right, you know. There's something wrong here. What's off here? There's, there's things going off. Do I need to pray? Do I need to intercede? What is it I need to do? Or what is it I don't need to do? Sometimes, you know, we want to wreck our brain about, or we're trying to figure this thing. We tr see, we want to control our environment, you know. We like our coffee just so. We like the Word of God sitting right in a certain place, and that's where we like to read it. You know, we want the music and the sound and the tones and, and everything because, you know why, we're so familiar with heaven that we know there's an orchestration and everything. There's a sound, there's motion, there, there's movement. And it's so busy. It's so busy in heaven now. You figure it's taken God 3,000 years to get ready to celebrate the uh, homecoming. So you're thinking about, wow, what kind of celebration is going to be? How awesome this is going to be. You know, it seems like we're, we're moving in that realm. We're sensing it. We're going up there. We're seeing it. We're understanding it. But yet, in our flesh, they don't have a clue. And that's okay, because it's not about that. It's about what our spirit's knowing. You know, we have a knower going on. We've had, we have such a knower going on that we're just pushing that flesh aside and knowing it's God that's saying this thing. It's God that's having us do this thing. It's a work and a purpose, a great work and a purpose, and a destiny going on in us. You know, and he's soothing us. He's soothing the pains in these areas. These things are falling off us. I tell you, it's just such a stress relief. And that there's no kind of God, not in heaven nor on earth, except our God, the living and the true God that can do what he does for us. There is, there is none like him. There is none like him. Because he knows all about it. He set us up for a challenge, and he meets that challenge every time. In the next verse, 28, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou, if thou, it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. You know, many times I've said to the Lord, okay, you're there. I want to be there with you. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want to say what you're saying. Be who you are. Be, in, be that in me, God. And then he begins to show, you know, he, he actually was showing Peter in this next verse what it is Peter really was. Without, without Christ, we are nothing. We are absolutely nothing without Him. Without His presence, without His anointing, without Him sending us where He would have us to be and going where He would have us to go, we cannot be who He wants us to be. We cannot be. It's His will, His way. He has a will for us. And it's our desire for our will to be strengthened in His will. Understanding Daddy God, understanding His compassion in His heart and move with every beat of His heart like that song. That was so awesome. I tell you, I mean, I was just so understanding what Daddy God's heart was on another realm, on another page of His of His life. Now we have to understand Daddy God's life and His life in it more abundantly and how He's granted us that life that we can no more struggle, but just be with Him as one in the Spirit. Be in unity as one people, one body, moving and having our being in Him, all about Him and none about us. And that's where we're coming to. We're actually in it. We're in that glory realm. We're set in that place. We're set in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at this hour. No more judging. No more condemning. Because Christ is a judge and He's not even doing that right now. It's the compassion, the grace to bring us into that place. And so many people are so far out there, we don't even know how he's going to bring them forth. But it's by his spirit. 
his long arms stretch forth as we pray and bring him to him to his side, his pierced side. And he said, Come. This is Jesus speaking. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Sometimes we're getting ready, we're walking, we're going forth, and all of a sudden the doubt, fear, and unbelief comes against us. Or, you know, most of the time it's coming up out of us. And that's what God is doing. With, our he with this healing transformation, he's pulling up those roots, those things that have been set up in us for so many years. He's pulling up the bitternesses, the roots of things that have tried to grow and overcome us, putting up thorns and thistles till we know the word, we understand the word, and it seems like the word is down in our bosom, but we can't even find the word sometimes. We, we can't even bring up the word because the things are choking us. But God says, like Jeremiah, he's pulling up, throwing down, and he's placing in us that very place. You know, like my son had seven root canals, and he had, you know what, we went to the first Genesis, the one time, it was like five years later, we actually went back to the same one. God held that root canal, he didn't have the cap on it, held that root canal till he's finished, till the right man went in the right place. He was so intricate, taking those little things going down there and pulling up every root. And my son's roots inside these teeth were so big, he said he had never seen them that deep before. So if he had anybody else that were careless and wouldn't work in there, get every bit of the root down there, they take these little screws and they screw it in and they keep pulling up the root. They twist it up and pull it out, twist it up and pull it out. And, keep, and each one of them, some of them four, some of them have five root, root things that they pull up from. And I sat there, I said, God, if you're concerned about one root canal or five or six or seven root canals in my son's mouth, I can imagine the ministry that you have for him because you're so intricate. Just to have the right man at the right time going back every week, every Wednesday, every week, every Wednesday. So everything was complete, you know. And the man had such patience. I was just amazed at patience that this particular man, he not only had the, the book smarts, but he was equipped with the patience to take care. So, it, you know, if you don't get everything out, then we get infected. And, and the truth will be ruined anyway. I'm still happy to be poured out. But I thank God for the grace and mercy. Sometimes to hold back what he's actually doing or needs to have done. And we wait. And then we go forth when it's time because God has everything set in place for the way he really wants it done for us for our life. And that in patience, we have that hope and waiting and knowing God's doing the job. We're walking on the word. So if he says no, not now, he's got a reason. So we just have to listen to that voice too and say, oh, no, not today. Stop. Lay down. That's it. That's it for today for you. And we have to be obedient in that thing and understanding. And here we find Peter. And when he saw the wind boisterously, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. How many times to say, Lord, save me out of this circumstance. Save me from my own self. Save me from my own self. I feel like I'm a time bomb ready to go off. If you don't do something for me on the inside of me, get this thing out of me. Help me with this thing. I don't know what I want to say or I don't want to do it. But God, only you know. Only you know me. Only you know me the way I am and what you want me to be. And I'm looking in the prophetic to see myself down the road so I can be exactly what you want to be. But today, I'm fragmented. I need to be healed. I need to be mended. And on the internet tonight, cry out to him in the same way. Be honest. Be open. You're finished. You're done. Unless you get God doing something for you tonight, you don't know what's going to happen in your life. Because only God can save, heal, and deliver you like none other. I'm a living witness. And there's many, many witnesses around me that can witness to the fact God has healed this vessel and keeps healing this vessel. It's a desire in our heart for all of us to be healed, all of us to be saved, all of us to be delivered and come in the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ so we can continue to go out and bring in the lost sheep. You know what? Jesus went out. He left the 99. He went out for just one. There will be just one that you go. If you're just set on that telephone pole for one person that's going to come up, that's what it's for. He sets you in a place. He sets you in a challenge. And it challenges our flesh. It challenges our spirit. For us to be in a place at the right time. You know, how long? I, I, you know, I was driving back and forth to Lourdes for 10 years, living in Sarp, 10 years, back and forth, and back and forth, and right to the end before he moved me to another place. And then when I got that place, I said, I wish I was back here driving back and forth because, man, where you sent me, I'm like, this is ridiculous. You know what I mean? 
But I was saying, how oh, long, Lord, driving all this way? But you know what? I made use of that time. I pray in the Holy Ghost. I said, you know what? Every moment, I'm going to start praying in the Holy Ghost. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And Jacob can test that fact. He said, how many times? My